this is, them. as you can see, old labels. They are, is it cardboard? Uh, that Holmberg, I guess, yeah. has written in order to keep track on this material himself. Maria, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, are these boxes the, the old genuine ones or are they, I'm not sure. They're inventoried at one stage. No, I don't think they are from us here, actually. I think that the orchestra bought them, Professor Orchestra ah, bought yes. them and got yes. them. Suppose. So over the years, material has coll been collected here by the different professors mm -hmm. at the uh, Department of Antiquities, and so they all have contributed in one way or another from different mm -hmm. regions mm -hmm. of the Mediterranean with pottery, and they have, start in this way, created a study collection for students to look at. So they have been collected over the years, and apparently. Holmberg brought some stuff, and the other professor who came later, um, Orchestra, brought a lot of pottery, I guess, to the, to the study collection. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to correct me yeah, if I'm wrong. The, the, uh, and made inventory. an inventory, made an inventory, inventoried all this. But you the age labels are yes. original, I suppose, aren't they? Yes, I think so, because I have, there are material from ASEA, also in Nafplion, I'm in the Leo study Michel, collection yes. uh -huh. in the Leonardo. And apparently what I've seen, uh, which is quite obvious, is that these little labels where it says H, that H. stands for, yes, for Holmberg. Holmberg. And it's his numbering here and his, uh, his um, uh, initial. Uh, because you also find that in the, um, uh, in, Afrion, in the study collection. Um, and then, of course, what happened with the material which is in Afghanistan is that there everything was mixed up during the war. They, had, they dumped pottery mm -hmm. in, on the roof or in the cellar somewhere. And then later, after the war, the, war, the old professors, not so old then, but anyway, they tried, they, from different excavation sites, they came there and tried to say, well, this shirt, I remember this one. This must be mine. It's from a CI in 1938. And then they said, you know, way <laughs> after, many years later, trying to sort things out. But um, I'm not sure how reliable that is, but uh, I think it's quite accurate. Um, there were lots of, there were English people and American people and then Swedish archaeologists doing this. And this is, this is pottery from, um, from mostly pottery, but also you see this little greenstone axe. It's part of a greenstone axe that can't be dated, unfortunately. But it's, um, it's badly broken, as you see. But we have quite a few of them <laughs> in, in all over the Peloponnese. They, are, they span from Neolithic into the uh, Bronze Age, um, well into the Bronze Age. It's very nicely polished, you can see, and a very sharp edge. We don't know for sure what they were used for, if they were just tokens of, of uh, uh, power that a chieftain, say, had as a, you know, he was the, the boss and he had one of these. So, uh, so with, who, who, who was keeping this uh, stone? Uh, it, uh, it, it could be, it? we don't know what they were used for, but it could be that it was only uh, a means to say that uh, I'm the boss, I have one of these um, little, you know, axes as a, as a what should I say, as a, yeah, as a, some kind of, of, a, uh, of power, power. you know, nowadays you're a chairman at a meeting, when you have your meetings, perhaps you have one of these uh, clubs, you know, and it's probably <laughs> originates from this idea. <laughs> uh, it's a, a still a mystery, I think, how they made it. How did it turn out gray? It's not only gray on the surface here, but it's gray all the way through, mm -hmm. you see. And it's all, they, they lots of it during the Middle Bronze Age. They, and it's, uh, it's made uh, according to a recipe. I mean, mm -hmm. and they used the same recipe, all of these potters. But we, we don't know how to redo it today. The Bronze Age, this is a bit funny, because this is something I also written about. Um, this is from ASEA, Holmberg number one. We should have started with this. This is part of something called gouged bowl. These are called gouges in English. 
And this big, you see these far, furrows, or whatever we should call it. This is the inside of a pot. And there is a whole pot like this exhibited from Ayurvedica in the museum of Tijia. And it's like the, the dia diameter of it is half a meter, it's roughly. They're big vessels, really big. And we still, they open bowls, very big bowls, with these big gouges. And we don't know what they were used for. Why do they have this kind of scoring? Uh, quite often they are painted. Uh, and why paint this if it's been used? There are lots of different theories. One is that there have been beehives and that the honey, I guess, would stick, uh, they would turn it upside down and the honey would stick onto these furs. Uh, no one have done any, nowadays we can do, uh, put a, probably a small piece like this in a, in a lab and make all kinds of tests and see if there are any residue of honey on it. Uh, I tried to do that actually on this mm -hmm. one, but it was so expensive. Very pretty bows. They're all different, you see. They're pretty similar in shape, but they're all individual in the patterns. They're not two alike. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of them over the Peloponnese, Neolithic sites, Mille Middle Neolithic um, pottery at its best. best. They're, very, they're, very th they're quite thin, as you see. They, they're expert potters. The people who made these have been very knowledgeable. But they are local, are they? Yes, mm -hmm. I think they are locally made, definitely. Yeah. There's a whole mm -hmm. pot with the same kind of pattern exhibited in Tijia from Asia with this kind of pattern. And as far as I've been able to um, uh, see, the pattern might originate from further up um, on the Peloponnese in Achaia in a, at a site called Akrata. Akrata that, in Ilia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, Ilia. yes, yes, mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, because Achaia. there they found a lot of pottery, but it's not really published, but um, that's the closest um, provenience that I've found. And that is a sign that they have found this at Asea, not only this piece, but what's in, in, in Greece also, is a sign, I think, that Asea was at the crossroads. Also, already mm. then, already, <laughs> <laughs> already then, should I have sunglasses on now? Uh, during the Neolithic period, Asea has been, uh, a place where people commuting from one part of the Peloponnese to the other have come yes, across. It's a geographical center. Yes, it is right in the center, it's still today, um, and um, it was already then. But what I've been objecting to, and for all these, during all these years, is that the idea that Arcadia, uh, overall, and Asia perhaps in particular, um, has been isolated from new trends and that there was a retardation, that things came up into the mountains of Arcadia later, and it's along the coast where all of the inventions and all the new things, spectacular things happen. I don't agree at all. I think very quickly, new trends uh, in, in whatever, uh, see in, in warfare or in pottery, in trend, typology, um, it came ever so quickly up to the to Arcadia and to Asia. It's always been at the crossroads and um, never isolated in any sense. Perhaps in the winter when there's lots of snow. At least.